All right, to those of you who have been following, welcome back. If you guys are new, uh, link in the description below to the two other previous videos of this boss plow and the situation I've been having with the wings on it, which you can see, got them warrantied, got them back. Here they are on the thing right now. I actually started recording this a little bit ago, but some of the settings in the camera were messed up, so I'm ending up reshooting it because it was going to look terrible. So, here we are. Um, yeah, if you guys haven't been following, um, link in the description below to the other previous videos of the issues we've been having if you want to see that. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. One of the wings still has the issue with the end, um, the paint buildup, so it had to be chipped off. The uh, dealer just chipped it off and whatever. And yeah, so clearly it's a common issue on these wings. If you're going to be buying a set of wings, expect this to be the problem. However, after I got all this bolted up and everything, and realized that bracket goes here, bracket goes here, and the very last instruction boss gives you in the manual. And keep in mind, nobody told me this after I talked to multiple of the reps or whatever, the service guys up at Boss directly. Nobody, I guess, said this or knew this to be a solution either. Is this chunk of the tube here is not necessary and can be cut off, you know, wherever in here, somewhere in here. Because it's not necessary, it serves no purpose. Why it's built this big in the first place, I don't know. Maybe they do it just so you can cut it off and then, you know... So, technically, that would eliminate the entire issue we're having in the first place. Um, just cut this off here, because it's only this section where it doesn't fit. You can see where it's been chipped off. That's the only section where the powder coating buildup is too big. So, if we cut it off here, it never would have been an issue. We could have capped the end and put a little spray paint over the end or something and called it a day. However, I didn't know that. It was a very last instruction in the instructions. Nobody at Boss knew that either. Um... Yeah. Other thing I wanted to point out, which I was just talking to you guys about um, before I realized all my settings were messed up, is in the instructions, if you guys are going to be installing these anytime soon, it depicts this bracket here on the inside. And in actuality, it needs to be on the outside because how this works is these guys come through these holes here, whatever, and then you twist it, which kind of locks it in and it prevents that from wanting to come out. So does this here, but it's just, you know, an extra safety precaution, I guess. But for if this um, piece like it depicts on the instructions is on the inside this won't twist up and clear so this has to be on the outside because this it pulls it too tight to this piece up here so with that said I don't know if it's supposed to be something that it, they want it that tight and you're just supposed to slam it up really hard because this whole wing is I mean it's not like crazy loose but it it does have some play in it so I don't know exactly what's what with that let's see there's a big hole in there so yeah so I mean it's pretty much on there that's the wing I've got to get the these pieces on and I did readjust these guys a couple of you guys had pointed that out they're supposed to go on the inside um, thank you guys that worked out perfect and uh, yeah so that's the front side of it so I got to get the bottom pieces on I've still got to drill this hole here now and um, Put that bolt in now that everything's kind of like dry fitted so to speak I'll drill the hole so yeah it's all going to work together well now everything's working good um, I guess kind of upset that that all that was for not you know if we didn't really need to didn't really need to get the uh, warranty and all that and get new wings when we could have just cut the old ones off and called it a day so but it's here now, we got it figured out, it's gonna work. And uh, not a moment too soon because they're talking snow this Sunday. So I'm gonna keep going on this, kinda keep buttoning everything up and uh, we'll check back in in just a second. Hey guys, I also wanted to share, I've been doing some reading here that's got this uh, MNLA thing, five lessons from the 2018 snow industry benchmark report. I was just gonna say, next video we do is gonna be about the snow plowing industry. Um, some of the things I've learned this year, I've taken a few classes, uh, done a lot of reading, things like that, learning about um, different practices with salting, things like that. Um, so next video we do, 
Um, we're going to be talking a little bit about everything in the snow plowing industry from de-icing, anti-icing, salting, um, you know, snow plowing, different plows, things like that. So all you guys, I want you to ask your question down in the comments below. Um, we're going to go through and try to answer a lot of the questions that someone may have if I have or know an answer to it. I don't know the answer to everything, obviously. Um, yes, I am only 20 years old. I've been doing this for a while, but not forever, and I don't know everything. So if you guys got a question, ask it down below. Next video, we're just going to be kind of sitting and talking and uh, talking about the snow plowing industry. So ask those questions, guys. And if you want to see the video, hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications so you get updated when it goes live. All right, so we got the wings on. We got the uh, cutting edges, so to speak, on, which are probably one of the strangest things I've ever seen. I mean, you can see nothing really. I mean, none of the rubber and this metal piece here are, like, cut the same. Like, there's a huge hole right here, but down here, it's the exact opposite. I mean, none of it, it just looks like it wasn't ever made for this. Like I took some extra parts laying around from a different plow and just kind of made them work for these two. But it also looks like none of these uh, plastic pieces line up, but if you can see here there's little sliders in here that Colton identified. So I think I'm going to go around and loosen all these guys up and then kind of slide this and adjust this on here so we don't have it rubbing here. And then maybe the top's kind of fine where it's at, but it's just rubbing a bit there. And you can see this side's the exact opposite where it's too far away, I think. So just kind of bump it in a little bit, tighten up that gap there. But you can see these are, I don't know, these are kind of weird. I don't know what the scoop is with this, why these don't fit. So, a little strange, but uh, yeah, I'm going to bump these guys over. And then once those are bumped over, that should be pretty much everything for the install process. So we'll get on top of that. All right, so just got those adjusted. Um, it's a little bit later in the day now. I uh, had some other stuff we had to run and do quick after that, didn't get a chance to film it. But you can see this one's a little bit tighter. You know, I mean, it's you can kind of see the warp where it's a bigger space on the bottom and then it gets narrower. I, I mean, the things, they don't line up perfectly, but will do. This side doesn't touch anymore. It's a little bit tighter than the other side, so it's, uh, I would say it's good. But that's, honestly, that's pretty much it. That's about all we gotta do for this plow now. I think that's, I think that's pretty much gonna do it. Everything's buttoned up. Everything's tight. These guys drilled in now. That's bolted in. Honestly, I don't know why Boston do just the same as this bolt here, like here. Why was it a different bolt? I'm not really sure why. Um, probably had some reason behind it, but there it is. So that's pretty much it. Yeah, you can see they're dusty. They got to get washed off. So I'm going to probably end up pulling this thing outside tomorrow morning once all this stuff is wrapped up and the snowblower is on the John Deere tractor here. This thing goes out of town for the winter and uh, just does a couple driveways, things like that. So um, yeah, so gonna pull this thing out wash it up and get it on the trucks uh, you know open the wings up things like that and make sure it all works perfectly we're gonna do that tomorrow once we get the John Deere out of the way move these over that's good mention that um, yeah I mean it was you know the process of putting it all on there wasn't terribly difficult I would say it was you know obviously dealing with all the crap um, warranties things like that was kind of a pain in the butt but other than that it wasn't really a terrible process wasn't anything too difficult I don't know why they did they don't uh, just put the holes in there. That was like, I don't know. I mean, what's one extra hole and another extra spare bolt put in there going to hurt anything, you know? So that I thought was weird. Um, I got to run and get Sawzall blades. Then I'm going to cut that off and put the cap in. So all our blades are just shot. So got to get Sawzall blades, and uh, we're pretty much ready to go, really. This thing can go out and go plow right now, just how it sits. It'll be just fine. So... That's, uh, that's going to be it for tonight. We're going to jump right to tomorrow morning when I pull this thing outside and uh, make sure everything works when I, you know, put it out into Power V. This sits on the ground just fine. It shouldn't change anything, but I just want to kind of see how it goes, pull it through, and then see how it works on the truck. Then we're going to check how wide we are. Does anyone else on here run a wide out like this? I'm going to climb on top of this plow. I mean, 
or run this wide of a plow, I guess. It's a 9-2 with one foot wings on each side, so 11-2. But I'm kind of concerned that going down the road is going to be a little close to too wide. But who cares? We're going to put her on the truck and see, so let's just jump right to that. All right, guys. The next day, we got everything hooked up, ready to go. It is cold. We had some flurries in the air earlier. Snow coming this weekend. Hopefully we have to plow. And here it is. This is the setup. She's got everything on there. It is uh, awfully wide, I would say. You guys let me know if you think I should just leave the wings on when I drive down the road. Uh, I don't know if that's legal or what. So... I don't know, she's quite the machine though. That is a huge amount of space that this thing's gonna be able to cover. 11 feet, two inches. The only thing I'm gonna have to do is probably try plowing it, and I'm probably gonna have to try uh, adjusting those, adjusting those wings, the uh, pieces on them. Whatever the proper terminology is for them. I kind of like how they curve in, adds a little to the scooping feature of it when you have it like this. Kind of makes it like a big box on it, you know? So that's nice. But I mean, she is huge when she's like this. I mean, that's got to be, I mean, what, there you're about even with the side of the truck right about there. It's got to be a few feet. So yeah, it's. Uh, we'll see how she goes. I don't know how truck's gonna handle this big of a plow I guess I've never used a plow this large on a pickup like this so we'll see what's what yes the wheels are gonna stay and uh, yeah all right so this is the part of the video where we're gonna talk a little bit about what I paid for the plow and kind of the whole setup and the process of it and uh, you can see here it is here and that's how I'm gonna be storing it by the way um, just putting the wings out in front when I need them put them in the back of the truck hook up the plow head to the site put the wings on if I need them at that site not going to be using the wings at every site because some sites it doesn't pay because it's an hourly and they're not paying me extra to put the wings on. So at those sites we'll be doing that. Other sites will have the wings on. Anyways, so let's get right into kind of the price breakdown of everything. Um, basically at the end of the day with tax it was 67, it was 66.75 for the 9-2 Boss DXT Poly Plow for the wings. Um, and all the hardware and everything to mount them just in the crate like you guys saw in the other videos and a brand new controller from Boss as well. So all three of those things it was $66.75 out the door with tax done deal which personally I thought wasn't a terrible price for what exactly you're getting um, wasn't too bad I believe the wings were like $800 something like that the plow was $55 something like that so at the end of the day controller $100 bucks or so so it was a pretty good deal, I think. Uh, if you guys think you've had a better deal or you have had better deals, you know of a better deal, let me know in the comments below where you got the better deal at and what you paid for it. If you don't mind sharing that stuff, I obviously don't mind sharing it, as you guys can see. Um, but if you feel comfortable sharing it, let me know in the comments. I'd love to see what kind of the price ranges are for this type of stuff. So, yeah, that's pretty much what I paid for that. The truck was already wired. It already had a mount on it. Um, so we were good to go there. I didn't have to buy any of that stuff just hook it up and be on my way. I did, because I put the newer wheels and tires and leveled the truck, I did have to drop the plow bracket, or the plow mount down on the brackets, and uh, I ended up getting new hardware, sandblasting the, uh, the mount and everything down and repainting it just so it looks nice. Still waiting for Boss to get my sticker, so we'll see if that ever happens, who knows, but uh, still waiting on that. So we'll see what happens with that, but yeah, 66.75 out the door for everything. You know, it really wasn't a bad deal for what we've used these 9.2s, these polys. I mean, you can see them back here. So I'm pretty familiar with how they operate. The DXT was, you know, a couple hundred dollar upcharge. I figured never used a DXT before, and I know I wanted a brand new plow, so might as well just get the DXT. I've heard mixed reviews on them from the dealer, especially. He says some people like them, some people don't. It just plows differently than a normal VXT, so it's kind of a different, a uh, little bit of a different feel. So it comes down to personal preference at that point, but. With that said, um, figured I'd get them, figured I'd try it. I thought it'd kind of be nice to have for a lot of the, we do a couple gravel roads, 
and it's going to be better off to have them because that trip edge, if we're on gravel, instead of the whole plow hooking and catching the gravel and the whole plow wanting to trip over, just that edge is going to fold over and that might make it a little better for us. So that's kind of why I ended up deciding, well, we'll run the DXT for a few years to see what's what. If we don't like it, we'll just end up selling it and get a new one. Um, I mean, maybe I'm wrong and, you know, uh, crazy for thinking, but I think plows are relatively cheap. For five grand, you can go out and, you know, pay it off in a few years if you do it right and you kind of structure your business right with plowing and everything. So shouldn't take a whole lot to do. Um, this year, we've got quite a bit of plowing lined up for myself, I guess, for the first year of doing snow plowing for myself, not really spending a whole lot of money marketing or anything like that. Um, yeah, so we've got uh, enough work to kind of keep us busy here. Now, like I was saying before, the next video we do is going to be kind of talking about um, our snow plowing setup for the year, kind of how we're structured, how I'm personally structured with this being my first year kind of breaking away from my dad from snow plowing, um, doing it for myself for the first time, getting my own contracts, and still working with him quite a bit too, um, being a subcontractor for him, and how it's all going to work out. Um, yeah, so if you guys want to see the next video, we're going to be talking about that, kind of how I got some of the accounts, um, what ways work best for getting new snow plowing accounts, and uh, what ways were kind of a waste of money or a waste of time doing too. So we're going to talk a little bit about that, um, probably end up talking a little more about the plow and prices and things like that in that video too, since it'll be a new video and not everyone will have seen this part of this video or seen this video. So we'll cover that again. But yeah, if you guys want to see that video, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button if you enjoyed watching this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time, next week, around this time, uh, to talk about snow plowing business in general. So we'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching.